Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad with Premier Leather Crafters and today's video is about transferring uh, artwork to your leather um, and a client hit me up so I'm working on another piece for a, a, a client right now and I thought it would be a great time to show you guys about how I do it. Um, now I know there's plenty of crafters out there in the world and they probably do their own different thing. Uh, but I'm going to show you again the an economic way of doing it, uh, a safe way to do it to where you can make this, make, make your pieces look very good and the tools that I use to do that and um, basically getting you to the point to where you, you can get off into your leather carving and crafting and doing a lot of different things. So with that being said, da -ba -bow, let's get off into it today. Uh, and what I'm going to be using today is two different styluses. Uh, I'm going to be using one um, stylus, the stylus with the ball in. And I think if you go to Tandy, this one would be 8059. Yes, 8059-00. Great one to use. Uh, and this is the stylus with the ball in. And then I'm going to be using my father's old stylus. Um, and this one is not in Tandy anymore. Excuse me. This one not this is not in Tandy anymore. Um golly, I don't know when he bought this. But they do have a new one that's out now. And the numbers of this one is 8039-06. So now that one that I that that stylus that I just gave you, the 8039-06, that one has a double end point stylus. Now I use my point point in for the fine detailing, uh, as in the artwork that we're going to do today. Especially if you're doing artwork that where you want to um, bring out the hair, where the hair lines are very fine. There's also another tool that's called a hair tool or a, a angel hair. Um, they might have it a different name now, but I have one of those, and those was one of my father's tools as well. But it's just basically put the strands, the those little lines and the strands from the hair. Uh, into your artwork, but we're going to be using this one, which uh, you can down uh, call Tandy, and Tandy has this. This one is the eighty thirty nine dash zero six, and then this one, the, the ball stylus, is the eighty fifty nine dash zero zero. Now I use my ballpoint stylus for basically the borders or the outside where I want them to be bold, and this lets me know uh, also which swivel knife to use. Um, now, if I'm using my uh, my pointed stylus, I would tend to use either my ceramic swivel knife or my angled swivel knife. That's just for fine detailing. And if I'm using my ballpoint stylus, then I know I'm going to have to use my square knife because those cuts are going to have to be bold. Now, in another video that I've done, I also told you guys about what I've learned over the years from a guy named Chance Chancellor. Uh, who was doing one of the leather crafting uh, classes at Tandy in Birmingham, Alabama. Every line does not have to be cut. Please remember that. Every line does not have to be cut. When you're cutting, that shows separation, which that's also going to lead you to use another tool behind that. So when I'm using my, my pointed stylus, I'm not really wanting to separate on that. Uh, my point of stylus is telling me later on down the road that I'll be using more of my, my modeling tools, which is my spoons. Because these lines I don't want to cut. I just want to make it appear to the, to the eye to manipulate the person who's looking at the piece that... Uh, uh, well, for example, like when you're doing the, the creases in your in your in the face or the wrinkles in your forehead, you don't want to cut those with uh, your swivel knife at all. Period. I would use my pointed stylus into the artwork, transferring the artwork, and then I would come back and use my modeling tool so you can see how it looks in the in the video where you can see the humps or the natural curves or the raising of the humps in the in the forehead and the brow. You can take your modeling tool and get that rounded look as well. So that's what, just a key point for later on down the road. Uh, every line does not have to be cut. Sometimes you can just use your, your, your stylus 
uh, your point and stylus in that. But uh, let me show you what I have also. Uh, you can get your tracing film, which uh, Tandy sells this by the yards. Uh, man, I, I usually get about 10 yards at a time. And that's enough for me to do cutting, um, depending on what piece, size piece I'm working. Like this is not so much as a big piece, but I took this off of that and uh, cut it down to where I can work with it. And then I transferred, I've already transferred my artwork. I'm not just going to give you guys a glimpse that you, where you can see the artwork is already transferred. But um, that's already done. And I also use masking tape or painter's tape. This is the only stuff that I know of. Somebody else might tell you something different, but it doesn't have the sticky on there. So do not put scotch tape, uh, duct tape, or cellophane tape, packaging tape. I mean, now I use this for uh, and I'm going to show you a very economical way why I have this here. And it's a purpose and a reason for this other than taping up the boxes when I get ready to ship. But your masking tape holds your artwork in place while you work. This is very key when you're trans transferring your artwork to your leather. A lot, oftentimes, and it was trial and error for me, and I didn't know it at the time until actually I was doing some painting in my house, and the the guy at Lowe's actually told me, "Well, do you need some painter's tape, you know, to make sure that your lines are straight and all of that?" And it, it clicked in my head just that quick. If this is good enough not to peel the paint off of a wall then it's definitely good enough, great, to not stick to your leather. That's the worst thing you can do, trust me, I know, is to put cellophane tape on your, your transferring paper and you stick that to your leather. And then when you get ready to peel that off, you got that sticky residue on your leather and it will really shine through when you get ready to stain, antique it, dye it, paint it, or whatever, and it just terribly ruins your piece but uh, packaging tape no masking tape masking tape or painters tape is good enough to hold your artwork there and it's great to not leave any of that sticky residue glue that uh, which is in cellophane tape now what I do use cellophane tape for and this is very key you guys um, once I transfer, uh, once I trace my artwork to my transferring film, and this is very key to, to, to you out to you guys out there who, who are getting off into leather carving, I take my packaging tape, clear cellophane tape, and I put this on top of my tracing work. You see that glare a little bit? I'm trying to find a piece to where it didn't tape. Right there. You see, it's just the edge of it. I taped all the way over there. Now, what I have found, and again, another crafter or somebody else may tell you something completely different. But I only use this when it's artwork that I may duplicate again. Sometimes I'll put it on there just to preserve the artwork because when you get into when you get to using your ball stylus or your pointed stylus over your artwork it starts to erase or remove the um your, your pencil um tray where you trace it with your pencil or your color pencils and i'll get to color pencils in just a minute that is something very crucial too but i uh i put the cellophane tape on top of the tracing film to where it will hold my my tracing lines solid and I don't have to worry about that and then if it's a piece that uh some artwork that I'm going to duplicate over and over again which is very rare um I all I will always have this artwork in a file folder somewhere that I can go back and reference it again maybe it, be, it might be a customer that hey you know he might lose a piece or it might uh, some somebody might have stolen it so he'll like hey man look I need to order another one. 
and I want it to be the exact same kind, you know, the exact same drawing. So then it's good to have these on hand to where you can go back into your file folder and then you can uh, just go back and retrace the artwork and, and do it all over again. Um, just to give you the, the prep side of it, uh, actually I'm going to do another video uh, because time is limited. So I, I try not to hold you guys no more than 10 to 12 minutes on these videos just to give you some serious insight of where to start and, and, and just again play around with it. Uh, but let's recap real quick. Uh, the ballpoint stylus, the ball stylus which is 8059-00, and then your pointed stylus, which they don't make these anymore. They make the ones now with the black uh, for ergonomics, uh, for the shapings, where you can more comfortable. You can tell the difference between these two. Antique right here, but I still use it. And this, these are the new ones here. So the new one that is out in Tandy is the 803906. So if you need an appointed stylus, get the 803906 for fine detailing and the ball stylus, uh, which I use for my borders. Uh, color pencils real quick. Uh, when you're doing a color photo and you want to remember, now when I first initially started doing this before I had the two different stylus, I used to trace my artwork with color pencils and that let me know what to cut and what not to cut and you really just get two different color pencils you don't need the whole I mean you got to buy them by the box but you can get your little small eight pack but you, you want to use the lot utilize the different colors to remind you later of what not to cut and that will transfer better with your artwork, especially when you're doing it. And then you can come back with the cellophane tape and lock those colors in. So even when you go back and reference your artwork, after you've already transferred it, you can look at your, your artwork on your tra uh, tracing film and it will tell you, okay, don't cut the hair. You know, or uh, use use my, my angel tool, my angel... Uh, line two and maybe I'll show you guys what that is because in, in this artwork we have uh, some hair strands that we're going to do uh, you might be getting off into leather pictorials and even in the mustache you know you want to use that angel that angel line tool just to put the lines in there because when you get ready to go back and, and dye it or antique it that line will show man it is something beautiful when you do Tandy has plenty of books on doing pictorials and, and, and things like that portraits uh which are very great uh to get i would tell you to invest in those books they're packed with a lot of information and then you have on youtube and facebook and social uh social media sites snapchat i mean i do these videos everywhere that where you have uh, not just myself but a lot of other crafters they go in there and tell you how to use them so you get the chance to read the book and you have the knowledge and then when you come back and you see one of these videos like what I do, then it tells you how you can really use that tool and what it can really do. Um, and again, buy your tools, learn your tools, use plenty of scraps or remnants and just come up, create different ways of different things you can do with just that tool. Learn your tools. I can never stress that enough. Learn your tools. Right now, I'm going to end this one. And then we'll go off into the next one where we'll actually go off into the transferring uh, and showing you how, how I transfer. And that'll give you a great first step on starting to getting off into leather carving and doing pictorials and stuff like that. Because you can really drive your, your prices and make great money doing leather carving work. You know, all right. This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad, Premier Leather Crafters. I'll see you guys in two and two. And uh, you can watch the next video and we'll try to keep that uh, in our time frame. Peace.